Hello lovely people of the internet, I'm Movie Geek and I post a film analysis every other Monday. This video is about the 1961 movie Last Year at Marion Bird. The following video kind of contains spoilers for the movie Last Year at Marion Bad. Not that it really had a plot. If your response to watching Last Year at Marion Bad was remotely similar to mine, it was probably something along the lines of What the Flip. While there is no critical consensus on what the movie is about, in this video essay I will unpick a few popular theories. Before I start though, I think it's important to know that there is no This is what the film is about and we can all go home now. And that's part of the beauty of the film. While looking at single interpretations is fun and can shed light on the movie, they are all, by nature, reductive. Last Year at Marion Bad connects with the viewer on a deeply psychological level and is a starting point for the viewer to analyse whatever thoughts the movie inspires in them rather than subscribing to someone else's take on the movie. With that in mind, I hope you enjoy this video, but it's only a starting point. I'd love to hear what thoughts and questions last year at Marion Bad inspired in your mind, so please do comment below your interpretations and read other people's. Last year at Marion Bad's screenplay was written by Alain Grier. In his work, he would use methodical descriptions of seemingly unimportant objects in a repetitive way so that he could break this repetition to create meaning. Des salles silencieuses où les pas des chimiques qui s'avancent sont absorbés par des tapis si lourds, si épais, qu'aucun bruit des pas ne parvient à sa propre oreille. Comme si l'oreille elle-même était très loin, très loin du sol. This replaced more conventional psychological description of the character's personalities. The viewer takes on the role of a psychoanalyst trying to piece together meaning from the dreamlike blur of reality, memory and imagination. By having the man and the woman often interrogate each other about what really happened last year at Marion Bad, they both take on the role of patient and psychoanalyst. To further complicate things, the viewer is analysing them both. However, as is characteristic of Grier's work, different viewers take different meanings from the movie, suggesting that, by watching the movie, the viewer has the opportunity to psychoanalyse their own reaction and interpretation, and, by extension, themselves. In fact, the director even said, For me, this film is an attempt, still very crude and very primitive, to approach the complexity of thought of its process. The myth of Orpheus and Eurydice was written by Virgil in ancient Rome. It follows Orpheus, who, upon finding his wife Eurydice dead from a snake bite on their wedding day, plays such sad music in his grief that all the nymphs and animals weep for him. On their advice, he travels to the underworld, where his music moves Persephone and Hades to allow him his wife back on one condition. He must walk out of the underworld with his wife following him, and not look back until they are both back in the world of the living. Ecstatic, he races to the living world, only to find upon turning around that Eurydice is just in the doorway of the underworld, and therefore lost forever. Orpheus is looking back could be interpreted as symbolic of his inability to stop looking back at the past he shared with his love. His grief stops him from moving on. Last year at Marion Bad explores this theme as the man grapples with his desire for the woman to leave with him, and the woman is unable to let go of her relationship with the man who is possibly her husband. They are locked in a stalemate where neither is able to move forward or away from their obsession. Consequently, the lack of any sense of time passing could reflect the characters and humanity's inability to move away from self-destructive obsession. We are trapped in Marion bad by ourselves. In many scenes in which the man describes interactions he believed happened between him and the woman, the characters move as if following his instructions. Consequently, you could interpret the movie as having happened entirely in his imagination or fantasy. However, as all the characters continue to become increasingly confused, including the man himself, by the events he is describing, the movements of the characters begin to spiral out of his control, resulting in the woman's possible husband shooting her. The man instantly backtracks in his narration at this point, suggesting denial. This then raises the question of whether the woman is dead, possibly killed by the man when she refused to run away with him, 
or possibly killed by her maybe husband when he found out about her affair with the man. To further this, the woman finds many versions of the photograph of herself which the man showed her, suggesting there are many versions of herself and events in the man's mind. The refusal to accept reality on the man's part in this interpretation could be alluding to the projection of blame for misogynistic acts onto women in society. The dressing down with the white feathers implies that the man saw the woman as an angel and couldn't cope when she didn't live up to his unrealistic expectations, and the death scene is incredibly stagey, once again suggesting that the man can't cope when he realises his childish expectations of women aren't reasonable. This adds another layer to the Orpheus and Eurydice interpretation, as the man refuses to accept the fact that the angelic woman he projected onto the woman never existed. It also leads to the next theory. In the two previous theories, the man is unable to cope with reality and therefore creates a fantasy out of his memories. This theory goes further. What if every single character in the hotel can't cope with the reality that they have died and therefore can't move out of limbo? There is a ghostly feel to the movie and the characters do seem to be stuck in the hotel while unaware that there is anything wrong. This would fit with the Orpheus theory. Inability to let go of our lives stops us from moving to our next one. It would also fit with the exploration of misogyny interpretation because in it the man is unable to accept that the woman is dead slash never existed. I hope you found this video interesting, even if it was a bit reductive. Last year at Marion Bad is considered part of the French New Wave movement, so if you'd like to look into that, I'll put a link in the description to my video on French New Wave. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Comment below what movie content you'd like to see on this channel, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on last year at Marion Bad in the comments. Who knows, maybe we could get a really good discussion going.